we're back. We're live. We're going to talk about Canada Review from the North with our old friend, Dr. Ken Rogers, who joins us from uh, Canada, British Columbia. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk today about um, about Canadian colleges and are they having the same kind of outbursts that American colleges and universities are having about Hamas, supporting Hamas uh, and protesting against Israel. So it's this interesting comparison because you know you can learn a lot about you know what happens in the U.S. by looking by looking at what appears to be a copy of the U.S. in Canada. Welcome to the show, Ken. Well, hi, Jay. I don't think that your college problem is widespread, but you know it certainly exists. Well, you know, it really surprised me that in New York City uh, last week we had protests and, and kids at the NYU area, which is um, my alma mater and so is yours, um, you know, pulling down the posters of, of the hostages and, and, and shredding them and throwing them in the trash. I thought it was, you know, that was pretty mean, and that's, that's a very understated word for it. But in New York City, New York has a lot of Jewish people. New York is a liberal place. It's a blue state. It's a blue city. It's a it's a city of some you know moral sophistication, and um, you know for example the, uh, the speech made after the attack by Eric Adams, the mayor there, uh, was really really interesting and, uh, and, a, and a and a moral statement. So you wonder why this would have happened in New York, but okay, it happened on college campuses. It, it happened in the U.S. Uh, at Harvard, Yale, Columbia, um, University of Pennsylvania. Um, it happened at Stanford. It happened at NYU. Both the undergraduate and graduate uh, parts of NYU, um, and uh, and presumably it's still happening. And there was all this issue about about firms that offered jobs to graduates, and then when they saw the graduate was involved in these uh, pro-Hamas, uh, you know, uh, protests and rallies. Um, it, pulled, it pulled the uh, the job. It, it uh, withdrew the job offer. Um, that's re- really extraordinary. And and then you have people who uh, signed letters but didn't want the press to know they signed the letters. That is uh, siding with Hamas, uh, supporting Hamas. I, you know, I just, nobody can tell me how this happened. So my thought is, I mean, why it happened? What is going on here with these kids? Um, and and I wondered, you know, if it was happening in a similar fashion in Canada. And if so, what is happening in Canada can reveal the why. Why are these kids in these colleges and universities on these otherwise liberal, you know, campuses are protesting in favor of Hamas? Well, I think that uh, your use of the words uh, favoring Hamas is wrong, as opposed to favoring Palestinian problems. You know, that is, the the human cost of the war is so devastating when you, you know, are killing children and, and women and innocent, uh, you know, young men or I'm not sure they're that innocent. You know, I was wondering what what happened when they paraded the uh, Israeli hostages after being raped, uh, some of them murdered uh, in Hamas, and and they paraded them down the street. And I thought, well, maybe people are just intimidated that they would allow this parade of naked, you know, humiliated, uh, scared for their lives women um, being paraded naked in the streets of Hamas. But then I read that no, no, they they weren't you you know uh, shy about it. They were cheering. They were applauding. Those people were not all Hamas. Uh, they were Palestinian, and they were applauding Hamas. So I don't think you can say that poor Palestinians, because they are involved and they support what Hamas does. Not all of them, and whether it's voluntary or involuntary, they were there in the streets cheering Hamas and and cheering for what Hamas had done. So it's not it's not as if there's a different moral fiber here. It's connected. Well, it's connected in the sense that and one of the people that I think knows the most about the Middle East uh, was an advisor in the U.S. government uh, named Ben Rhodes. And 
I saw him the other day, uh, and he really emphasized the idea that that the Middle East has proved more than any place on earth that that war simply gets four responses. It gets more animosity, more hatred, more discrimination, and more terrorists. You know, and the Middle East has had nothing but wars for a long time. And so it's not surprising that it's full of those people. Well, if if you're in um, the, the uh, Gaza Strip, and you've gone years and years and years with the press saying, you know, any economic problem in the Gaza Strip is solely the problem, you know, caused by Israel. And you got the propaganda machine, similarly to the way Trump can get away with uh, raising money on, you know, getting a new indictment. You know, you put out enough false information and people are dumb enough to hear that information and think those are the facts. So, you know, you're sitting where you have, uh, you know, two million Palestinians that have been, in one sense, they're the innocent public, you know, but and they're being governed by people who took their uh, power by force. But nevertheless, over, you know, many years, they've been indoctrinated to believe that, um, you know, all the crap that they've been fed. and um, so when you you know see the um, those people suffering, I don't think that they're they're totally innocent. They they are certainly complicit in all, all the crimes that Hamas has uh, undertaken. But uh, the protests that I see in in North America, there's virtually nothing in the area that I live in. Uh, anything around here has been you know, pro-Israel and simply, you know, somewhat along the line that, uh, you know, if uh, if uh, you were um, lived in a nice house and next door to you uh, was a, uh, a, um, a home for uh, homeless children and that it's run by half a dozen people and over time, those half dozen people have come over and they've broken your window and they've kicked the door and they've put spray paint on your your house, uh, you know, over and over and over. They've just been, you know, terrible neighbors doing damage to you, you know, and they kicked your dog or they shot your cat. And, and then, you know, last week they came over as a group and they, uh, when you were away, and, uh, you know, they... Uh, kidnapped your wife and one of your kids, and they uh, they raped one of your daughters and and uh, killed the other couple kids. Now, what are you supposed to do? You know, and you're supposed you know are you just supposed to sit there and be a nice guy? Now, of course, their house next door has all of these children that they're supposedly looked after, so they got you know, 50 children surround, you know, surrounding these five guys, you know, and, uh, you know, the five guys deserve to be dead. You should kill them. Uh, but how do you get to them without having some harm to those kids? No, the kids are not complicit. They don't know that what these terrible five guys have been doing or they met have observed something, but they've been, you know, they've been growing up in that place and, you know, they've kind of been looked after no matter how lousy their standard living is. So you get a different point of view of, you know, where do you sit in this big circle of problems? You know, but uh, to me, the majority of Canadians favor uh, you know, a peace in the Middle East. They like the, the two-state solution, and they recognize very clearly that that Israel has proposed this two-state solution over and over, ever since its its initial formation. But um, 
all of the neighbors have rejected that. All of the Arab states that surround Israel, including and in particular the Palestinians, have rejected the two-state solution. And they have started the wars against Israel each and every time. You know, and then when they get thumped by Israel for invading, you know, they scream bloody murder that, oh, Israel is terrible. Look at what they're doing. You're massacring people. Now, one of the, to me, important factors in the reaction of, of the rest of the world, let's, maybe even Europe and North America, is, is that there's a long, long history that somehow um, Jewish people, you know, should be looked at differently than everybody else. I can remember when I grew up, you know, the the idea was, you know, you know, gee, you got to be cautious about Jewish people. Well, when I made it to high school, you know, I became good friends with several Jewish kids. I had not encountered any in scale prior to that. You know, I played on a basketball team with a couple of of Jewish kids, and uh, and kind of had to make up my own mind that what, what's this point of this? Why should they be treated differently? You know, and and as I started college, you know, and had looked at going into the real estate development business. Immediately, you know, I got several adults who I thought were reasonably intelligent and reasonably informed, but had obviously had, you know, indoctrination passed down through the centuries, you know, of, of looking at Jewish people differently was, was they says, well, you can't go into real estate development. They got, look at these Two terrible examples of real estate developers in 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 southern Alberta, you know, the province I lived in, in uh, at the time, that um, you know are just rotten scoundrel guys, you know, and, and and they were both Jewish. Of course, that was their point. Well, it didn't take me too long before I realized that about you know fifty percent of the significant real estate developers in in Calgary and Edmonton were Jewish. But virtually all of them were fantastic people. I mean, I did business with some of them. I One of the kids I went to high school with, his father donated an entire hospital. <laughs> They're, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, my emotional response coming back, but uh, you know the um, historical idea. I tried to figure out why was there this long range. You know, everywhere in the world, this this feeling that Jews are different, and and I have come to the conclusion that it's because they are economically so successful. You know, and it's not all of them. But many of them are just absolutely outstanding in terms of their success. And, and the, it's kind of a jealousy, an envy, you know. And, and if you think of, um, you know, particularly the finance industry, you know, is, is, that seemed to be one that really rattles people or it, it grates their soul that, that a significant amount of the finance industry has over the centuries been dominated by Jewish people. And of course, nobody's ever happy with their banker. Yeah, but keep in mind yeah, that think... the reason the reason historically that Jewish people went into finance and that sort of thing was that they were prohibited in most of uh, Eastern Europe anyway and maybe Western Europe, too, uh, from engaging in agriculture. They could not own the land. They were, um, they were discriminated against in terms of the, the regular, regular ag agricultural society. So they had no choice but to do something outside of that society. And what they wound up doing was, uh, was finance, and they got good at it. 
Um, but, it, you know, the anti-Semitism has existed before the Jews ever got involved in finance. I guess, you know, what you're, what you're pointing to in all of this is that there must be anti-Semitism, okay? Um, but what I cannot understand, and maybe you can help me with it from the, you know, view from the North, is why these young people in all of these universities, some of whom have very high bars for admission, are anti-Semitic or whatever they're doing. I mean, it seems to me they are anti-Semitic. Where does that come from? Is that deeply ingrained in the American culture? Um, is it deeply ingrained in the academic world? Uh, why is this happening? Why is nobody saying, stop doing that? It's not moral. It's not fair. It's not just. It's not right. It's, it's, it's bigotry of the worst order. We don't support that. And you can't do that on our campus. <clears throat> and, the, and, then the, and then the crowd argues, well, this is academic freedom. So we can say anything we want, including hate speech, including speech that threatens and threatens violence against the Jews, like, like that group of Jews who was barricaded at Cooper Union, which is just a couple of blocks away from NYU, if you remember, uh, barricaded in there because there were threats of violence made against them. What did they do? They didn't do anything. They're not even, you know, Israelis. They're not involved in Israel. And yet, and yet here we are in New York City and other campuses around, you know, the United States where, where this anti-Semitism is coming out. And virtually hundreds of thousands of people have appeared in the street, many of them holding Hamas signs. What does that tell you? Uh, and tearing down posters of the hostages. This is really insanity. It's like trying to understand the Trump base. You know, people who would um, follow a fellow who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, seeking policies that would destroy them, and yet they follow him. Uh, so I, you know, I just don't understand what is happening in, in the academic world in this country. These are students, and I think there are some prep professors around. There's faculty here in Hawaii uh, who supports Hamas. Um, and has been supporting the Palestinian, quote, movement, end quote, for years and years. They didn't say boo about Putin's invasion of Ukraine. They didn't say boo about all these other places, hot, hot spots in the world. Uh, they didn't say boo about Hong Kong and the, the loss of uh, freedom in Hong Kong uh, or, or the uh, Uyghurs in Western China. Didn't say boo. But of course, in Israel, they, you know, they criticize Israel. They've been doing it for years. They, they are monomaniacal at attacking Israel. Somehow, this has taken root in the American academic community. And I don't know, can you help me understand it? What is it? Is it just an expression of anti-Semitism? It is, a, is it a flaw in our societal values? It is a flaw, is it a, is it a flaw in, in the American culture? Is it a flaw in the European culture which came over? What is it? Well, I I think that that you're um, overstressing, you know, anti-Jewish, as opposed to the protests being very much against the you know obliteration of the public in. But, but, but wait, you know, wait, you know, it's it's clear enough to all these people who read and write that Hamas is doing this to kill all the Jews and destroy the state of Israel, and that it is being supported by Iran, whose mission is to kill all the Jews and destroy the state of Israel. Um, so if you support Hamas, that's the principle. If you support Hamas, you support Iran, uh, Iran and that's the principle. So it's impossible to extricate one from the other. And so if you believe in Hamas, um, that's what you get. And then you find that actually Hamas is, is, is using everyone in every Palestinian in, in Gaza as a human shield, some of them willingly, some of them not willingly, but they're all there. And they're, you know, they all were present at the parade of naked hostages, uh, and they were all cheering cheering it on. So it's very hard to extract the Palestinian situation. And furthermore, you and I are talking before the show about how, um, you know, the hospital that was bombed, um, that was, you know, struck. And, and the first thing that Hamas did is 
They told the whole world that it was the fault of the Israelis. Come to find it wasn't. It was the fault of the, the uh, Islamic Jihad, which is related to Hamas. Then we find, two or three days ago, we find, and the evidence is complete, um, that where Hamas lives is under the hospitals in any event all through Gaza, especially North Gaza, and because they, you know, they want to use all the people in the hospital as human shields, which is against the law of war. It's against international law, but they do it because they don't give a rip about international law or law or morality. So it's very, I'm saying, it's very hard to extract, you know. And some of the people uh, who were visiting the hospital, the Palestinians, knew that there was Hamas in the basement. Some of them didn't know, but, you know, from the, the analysis made by the Israeli intelligence, what are you going to do? Your question, what are you going to do? You're going to, you know, give up, say, say, I, I don't want to hurt anybody here, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to stop them. We, and I include myself, have to stop them. We have to condemn what they did. And people, for example, in the United Nations had a little trouble condemning them. And, uh, gee, I saw a speech by the Israeli representative the other day. He was so right on. You want me to join in a, in a resolution here that does not condemn Hamas? It doesn't even mention Hamas, and you want to make a big resolution that Israel should stop um, trying to defend itself? No way, Jose. We're not doing that. We have to defend ourselves. We have to survive. That was his message. All I'm saying is that it's very hard to separate um, the Palestinian cause, which is perverted, um, and, and Hamas. It's connected. And what are you going to do? What are the Israelis going to do? Uh, I think there's so much um, propaganda, as you said, that it's very hard for people around the world to get a handle on, on what has happened and what should happen. But, you know, the tilt point is they don't like Jews too much. And uh, they have been inculcated with this notion of anti-Semitism um, by the Palestinian movement emanating largely in the United States uh, for years. I don't know what we're going to do, Ken, but I am very concerned. Well, I agree with most of what you've said. In fact, virtually all of it, with with one sort of major exception, and that is, if you're a reasonably intelligent person and well informed, you're dead on. But if you're coming back to what are all these protests about, which I think you are over pushing that it's anti-Semitic as opposed to anti what Israel is now doing. You see, I think that, that the less educated person or the person less up to date of what's going on simply sees a scattering of news which is overloaded with the you know wonderful PR from the Gaza Strip of some child with a bleeding running down his face or whatever it is being carried and somebody grieving and, you know, in exaggerated fashion, you know, and they're saying, you know, there's, and in their mind, it's like, well, there's a handful of terrorists. And yet the Israelis are out there bombing the bejesus out of two million people. They're just indiscriminately killing them. Just look at the news. I don't think that's that, true. I don't, I don't think I, that's neither, true. I don't, neither yeah. do I, but I think that's that's what the majority of the public sees, and that's what the majority of the uninformed well, it's public... It's a propaganda campaign. Believe. It's a propaganda campaign, and, you know, it's, it strikes me so interesting that Hamas and the Palestinians in Gaza are, A, always ready with the camera, um, they have taken photographs of all those bloody children, you know, to beat the band. Yeah. Uh, and I'm and I'm wondering if anybody's looking to see whether these uh, these these you know, movie clips came from somewhere else or they're staged. Uh, I believe that some of them must be staged. There's too many movie clips. Notice too that the Israelis don't do that. Uh, they are more respectful of the dead and the tortured and the maimed. Uh, they they don't take pictures of the bloody corpses. Uh, they tell you, they show you people being buried, they show you funerals, but they don't show you the gore 
it's the gore that uh, that really sends the message. And you know, I, I might add that uh, this is perfectly intentional um, by Hamas, and the uh, the uh, Palestinians have been doing it for years. Let me let me show you a, a kid bleeding, and it'll tear your heart out, and you'll side with me, and you'll side against Israel. This whole thing is a is a play of, of a play before, uh, except it reaches further because social media and all that. It's part of the war. It's a hybrid war. And and the, the hybrid war is uh, is the media and social media. So, you know, I, I take it with a grain of salt. And certainly I, I listen to the Israeli uh, reports, news reports, and I say, hmm, this is not what's happening. Is not it's not just the these Palestinian kids, and you know, remember the knock knock bombs, you know, where they said, "Get out of this house, get out of this neighborhood, go south." And the Palestinians, I mean, only now do we reach a reasonable percentage of the Palestinians who are moving, but but for weeks they would say, "No, no, I'm not moving," um, and uh, you know, essentially, I think Hamas is telling them, "Don't move, don't go south." We want you to be a human shield. We want you to get hurt. Uh, well, don't, don't all, listen. They also, they also, in that regard, uh, they have been um, the propaganda over the years whitewashed the idea that that really they, you know, they're already refugees. You know, their homeland is, you know, the is where Tel Aviv is. You know, that's where they should be. They've been shoved into this corner, uh, you know, between the Mediterranean and Egypt, this skinny little strip, uh, you know, and, and they've been forced to be there and they, you know, everybody would like to go home. You know, and they think of, of the Israelis as as occupying their, what should be their homeland. You know, they were shoved out unfairly. They just have never, ever accepted the 1948 solution to the mess that the Middle East was in then. Mm. But they, um, it was never their home. You know, no, so I, never their I home. I mean, it, the, the only country yeah. that has ever been named as a country in, the, in that area, uh, you know, from my less than perfect knowledge of history, you know, was there's been a Jewish state there. You know, in that general area, you know, major part of it, there used to be the Phoenicians. And other than that, and I don't know whether the Phoenicians, you know, were, you know, um, partly Jewish, partly Arab, or, or none of that, <laughs> you know, but, but nevertheless, there has never been a, a, a state called Palestine or a country that was dominated by Palestinians. Yeah, well, Pal the, the word Palestine, Palestinians was was invented, okay, in the early part of the 20th century. Um, it really didn't mean anything, and, and there were no people by the definition of uh, Palestinian until, I don't know, the late 20s, early 30s. So uh, all this historical, you know, connection that they claim is really uh, propaganda. But let me, let me go back to the question, though. Can you explain to me why American students who might have very good grades out of high school, who may be doing very well in college, who go to the best universities, you know, by our reckoning so far, the best universities in the country, and uh, protest uh, in favor of, uh, essentially in favor of Hamas, carrying flags and ripping down uh, posters of, of of these terrified um, hostages. I mean, what what by the thousands, by the thousands? What is that? What kind of social um, process leads them out and, and signing letters and making all these you know public statements? Um, what what makes them do that? Is this does this mean that that generation in these American colleges and universities? Is fated to have their to have their signals wrong, and as and when they get to be the leaders of the country, what kind of what kind of people will they be? People ask, you know, if this if he's doing this now in the street, what kind of a, an elected official will he be? What kind of a corporate executive will he be? Um, and the answer is strange. I mean, you know, it's 
it's not a good answer. Well, I, you know, I might give a partial answer. When, when I was 19 or 20 years old, um, you know, my IQ might have been similar to what it is today, but certainly my smarts were not. My, my worldly smarts, what I sh should do and did do, you know, was not what I, you know, 15 or 20 years later recognized was wrong. You know, the, uh, you know, college students, uh, you know, might have good IQs, but they don't have enough experience, so they make some pretty dumb moves. Um, I'm sure they you know, do. You, I, can't, I know. you can't. And they, they love to follow the leader and they love to be rabble rousers, you know, and stir the pot. Um, you know, playing smart alecky almost, but you know, uh, however, um, I, I use as an example, um, uh, you know, of of how one changes, you know, as I tend to think that that when I started college, uh, you know, anything to do with LGBTQ, whatever the string initials <laughs> are, if I get them wrong you know, just was wrong. You know, it was like, gee, that that's just, you know, bestiality almost. You know, where that was just, I didn't know any better. Where did I, I didn't have anybody give me specific training one way or another. It just kind of filtered in from the air or my surroundings, it, it, you know, and minor comments by others you know and and it didn't take me too long as a young adult to out in the world with the job to recognize that that was a pretty normal way of life for an, for a fairly large number of people um but uh i'll, you bet, know, I'll I, bet you 10 bucks you never attended a rally uh against gay people uh, I bet you ten bucks that you never um, got together with a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand other college students who were similarly confused uh, and 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 chanted uh, hate speech against uh, LGBTQ, um, and 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 that's the difference. Um, you know, I mean, if you were if you were mistaken in your worldview, okay, but how about uh, a national phenomenon? where virtually hundreds of thousands of students are mistaken in their worldview. It's different. I still think the majority of them are out there on the belief that, that, that Israel's overdoing the punishment of, of innocent Palestinians. I don't think the Palestinians are as innocent as the students do. Uh, I think that's just lack of knowledge. Uh, and I don't think that the students have thought through, you know, the what's the end game? You know, like in the end, you know, the only thing that works in my mind is a two state solution. And how do you get from here to there? You know, the common well, sense. The problem, say you've the got problem to I out. see, the uh, problem is I see is if you can and me, we go out to a campus rally, protest, what have you. And we stand in the middle of that crowd and say, you know, you guys don't have it exactly right. Uh, you're wrong to criticize, uh, you know, Israel the way you do, and you're wrong to support Hamas the way you do. What would happen to us? Would they say, you know, Ken, you may have a point there. Let us no, have a cup of that coffee. Would, that wouldn't and, happen. He might have a reason. broken arm. <laughs> no, you're liable to be assaulted. You know, but but even you know when when you were twenty and I knew you, you were not dumb enough to you know look for a fight. You know, like like you know, there's a time and a place to tell somebody that you think they're wrong. Most people do not take uh -huh. you're wrong in a peaceful way. There's not a nice free exchange of views is not a normal <laughs> it might be it might be psychologically correct, but it doesn't happen in day-to-day -day life. And and you know it takes a little time for for the hu uh, humans to uh, to learn 
I, I think you've touched on a, a very important point for kids, for kids in college and university, and for that matter, for faculty. Um, it's the mob psychology thing. If you see people all around you, you know, taking a position um, that something is unfair, whatever it may be, um, then you know you uh, then you're likely to to join it. And and maybe you know maybe there's a pretty girl right there uh, who you'd like to be with, and uh, you know it helps you that there's it's a great social connector. You know, to do that. Um, and you know, and when I was in school, the, the Communist Party was active, and and there were you know guys who went to these rallies so they could get a date. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it had nothing to do with ideology. Um, but I, you know, I, I think I think the problem is uh, that this is a, a larger phenomenon than we've ever seen before in the country, and it is a phenomenon where people have not thought it through. And it is a phenomenon where the uh, faculty administration is cowed. Uh, they don't. They don't know what to say, what to do. They let it happen, even if it re reflects badly on the on the student body and the school. So, um, you know, I the propaganda has found a way. Let us not forget that Vladimir Putin supports Iran, supports Hamas, uh, is down on the Israelis. Um, and he's joining Erdogan in uh, in in Turkey in that regard, and he's an expert on the internet research, social media propaganda machine. And every time something like this happens, a, a hate phenomenon happens in this country, like we have politically. I think of Vladimir Putin trying to churning his machine and trying to get people divided on anything, because well, he, you know you divide and conquer. He just loves this uh, mess in the Middle East because uh, what have you heard about Ukraine lately? You mm -hmm. know, it, it's been put on the back shelf uh, uh, in most people's mind. Well, you know, he just loves that. Um, but that does not, uh, you know, fit my definition of right and wrong. You know, my right and wrong problem, you know, with what the mess in the Middle East is now. The only way I can see coming out of, you know, uh, it, having peace over the, a long period of time is that Israel continues to obliterate the um, Gaza Strip until they dig out of the tunnels or wherever else Hamas is hiding. And those amass people who who can get away can make it to Iran or Qatar or wherever they would have a safe haven, but for the most part would be out of of the Gaza Strip, and that the Gaza Strip would be in such terrible physical condition that it'd be essentially uninhabitable. Now it has been a welfare state supported by the rest of the world forever and ever, anyhow. You know, it was 80% of the population was dependent on, you know, 20 trucks a day of, of aid chugging through the southern border. Uh, you know, well, now they need 100 trucks or at least 25 trucks instead of 20 or whatever it would be. Well, to me, you, once the Israeli armies mopped it up, as long as that is where the military side ends. That is, there's no extra fronts opened up by Hezbollah or equivalent. Then you're going to need somebody like United Nations to manage the Gaza Strip and the West Bank until some level of government, like some level of stability physically, some the economies are running a little better. And and that there's some stability, and they can get a government that wants the two-state solution, you know. And and that might take 15, 20 years. You may have to go through a whole generation of people before you can do it. And I, I can't see any other solution. Like, no, I, I can't end, either. End, what is an end solution other than that? I I I don't see a solution other than that. And uh, I don't see the United Nations as playing any significant role because the United Nations is completely over the hill and dysfunctional, non-functional. Um, but unfortunately, I agree with that for the most part. 
But that's but still... I'm sure the Israelis have an idea about what they have to do because, you know, the United States learned in Iraq and Afghanistan too, for that matter, that if you if you just go to war with somebody and you leave them in a vacuum, then the same thing will happen again. Uh, you know what George Santayana said: those who um, those who uh, don't uh, remember history are doomed to repeat it. And and we have to go now. Uh, so Ken, thank you. Um, we come back. We'll decide what else to cover, whether it be something purely <laughs> Canadian or or something global like this, because you know the United States and Canada are connected at the hip, and and our discussions have revealed that to me so far. I, I'm. I missed a good point, though, is one should compare the GDP per capita of all the Arab countries surrounding Israel and Israel. Israel ranks at the same level as Canada on GDP, and Iran is about one-fifth of that per person. That's and true. All the rest of, and all the rest of the countries are about the same, unless they have a lot of oil. That's true. Power comes out of a sword, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, thank you, Ken Rogers, Dr. Ken Rogers in Kelowna, British Columbia. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in a couple of weeks and explore all the other issues in the world today. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. 